We're good, Dave. Yeah, thanks. Good evening, uh, everyone. Welcome to the January 2024 meeting of the Committee of Adjustment for the Town of Tecumseh. Welcome to you all. Uh, I'm going to try and, try and keep things moving tonight. So we have, uh, in terms of roll call, we have uh, Tony uh, on remote. Tom Marinchet is going to be absent tonight. And so, and everybody else is here. Oh, Paul. Yeah. Well, Paul, Paul Jobin will, will be here. I'm sure. Cause he's kind of indicated that he was going to be. Thanks for that. Um, call the meeting to order. Is there any disclosure of pecuniary interest? Seeing none. Um, uh, Minutes, we didn't have minutes. Okay, so we're right into the application. See, we're gonna be quick tonight. Um, 770054 Ontario Inc. Outer Drive. Welcome. I assume you're Mr. Mayor. Okay. Application for consent B01247700054 Ontario Inc. 5350 Outer Drive. The purpose of the application is to sever a 0.53 hectare, 1.3 acre vacant parcel of industrial land identified as part one on 12R-13573 and outlined in red on the sketch. The proposed 0.86 hectare, 2.1 acre retained parcel contains an industrial building and is described as part 29 12R3555 and part one 12R-10378 outlined in green on the sketch. The parcels were once separate but inadvertently merged due to common ownership. The property is designated business park in the official plan and zoned industrial M1 in zoning bylaw 85-18. Administration and agency comments. Public Works and Engineering Services has no comments regarding the requested severance. Building Department has no comments. Fire Department, there are no outstanding, sorry, Finance Department, there are no outstanding charges or balances on the subject property. Fire Department, no comments received. IRCA's comments, this site is not located within a regulated area that is under the jurisdiction of IRCA. As a result, a permit is not required under Section 28 of the Conservation Authorities Act. Um, no objection to the application. Ministry of Transportation, the MTO does not object to the proposed severance of 5350 Outer Drive. However, the property is located within the MTO permitted control area as such, MTO review permits are required prior to any development on this site. Bell Canada, no concerns with the application. Thank you. Okay. So, Mr. Merritt, at this point, I usually ask the proponent if they have anything you want to add. Good. Uh, no, there's nothing to add. She said everything I was going to say. Okay, good. Well, that's her job. <laughs> okay, is there anyone here on this application besides Mr. Merritt? No? Okay, you're all in for something else. Okay. Committee, questions? Pretty straightforward. Tony? Oh, I can't see. I can almost see Tony. He's not jumping up and down anyway. Question? No? No. Lori? Thank you, Mr. Chair. So just a question to administration related to uh, the viability of the severed lot, just to confirm that it would proceed or any development would proceed through to site plan control and during said site plan control, would services or rather, I guess, studies to determine if services and availability, would that be a part of that site plan control? 
Yes, through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, any development proposed on the, the post severed lands would be subject to site plan control and servicing issues would be addressed as part of that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, furthermore, yeah. uh, just for the sake of the record, no minor variances are required from what I understand as a part of the application. Uh, could administration please confirm? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? You mentioned that uh, that the property was severed at one time and merged on title. Yes. Identical lot lines? Exactly. Yes. That's why when you see in the red outline, part one on the 12R13573, that was the conveyance of the second piece of okay. property. All right. Just want to make sure we weren't making new ground here. <laughs> Okay, any other questions? Motion. Lori? Thanks, Mr. Chair. In the case of application B-0-1, sorry, B-01-24 B for 5350 Outer Drive, application for consent, I move to approve the consent in that the application is in keeping with the PPS and official plan, as well as meets the intent of the zoning bylaw. Thank you. Uh, supported by Tony. Any discussion on the motion again? Seeing none, all in favor? Carried, unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next is Craig, Craig and Lisa Mason, but they already knew that. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just the agent, John Ulyss. Oh, okay. Not sorry. Yes. Go ahead, John. Application for minor variance AL 124, Craig and Lisa Mason, 13778, Riverside Drive. The purpose of the application is to request relief from the following subsections of zoning bylaw 2065. Subsection 6.1.3E establishes that any new dwelling shall not extend beyond the established building line, and two, subsection 6.1.3EI. Triple I establishes a minimum interior side yard width of 1.8 meters, 5.9 feet. The applicant is proposing to demolish the existing single unit dwelling and construct a new two story single unit dwelling, having a building footprint of 298.7 <laughs> square meters, 3,215.18 square feet. 46.6 square meters, 501.6 square feet, of which will be beyond the established building line. See the uh, attached sketch to the notice. The proposed single unit dwelling will also result in an easterly side yard width of 1.5 meters, 4.9 feet, and a westerly side yard width of 1.6 meters, 5.2 feet. The property is designated residential in the official plan and zoned residential type one zone in zoning bylaw 2065. Administration and agency comments. Public works and engineering has no comments regarding the requested minor variance. Building department, no comments on the minor variance requested. Proposed build will require IRCA clearance at the time of permit application. Additional requirements will include an engineered lot grading plan, zoning compliance with the air conditioning unit location, and drawings to meet the Ontario building code. Finance department, there are no outstanding charges or balances on the property. Fire department, no comments received. IRCA, no objection to the application. And they can confirm that application for permit 844-23 has been received for the proposed development. Essex Power, the customer will need to call Essex Power Line for service demolition and require a new meter spot. 
public comments. As part of the application, the applicant has submitted a letter in support of the application by the owners of the two residential properties that abut to the east, along with the owner of the property that abuts to the immediate west, immediately past the aforementioned St. Mark's Beach Park pumping station property. Thank you. Okay, following our usual practice, uh... Is there anything you guys would like to add? No, uh, she got everything. Everything's okay. fine. That's good. Uh, people in the audience about this application? I, I'm sorry, we have to get on the mic. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm Jennifer Bondi. That's my husband, Charles Cowley. We live to the immediate east and we wanted to um, come express our, our support for the project. We're very excited um, for Craig and Lisa. Um, we were we had expressed to them a little bit of concern with the retaining wall because we've got some fairly large, five or six fairly large trees along there, but we were able to discuss that and it's been a very good experience for us. So we're looking forward to uh, their 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 new project. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. It's always nice to hear positive comments on these. It, it helps. Sometimes it helps not us. like that. <laughs> but anyway. Um and nobody else. We're okay. Um any questions from the committee? You want to give me uh Tony up again? In case these are these are our favorite ones, these sight line applications. So. Been through many of them. Nothing. Somebody want to make a motion? Oh no. Okay. <laughs> Thanks uh, again, Mr. Chair. So. Potentially a question for yourself, the uh, agent representing the property owners. So I understand that there's an existing dwelling that's already encroaching into the sight line. Can you explain or maybe help to determine what is the difference in encroachment from the previous dwelling to the proposed dwelling? I guess what is already being encroached and what more will be encroached into? It's on, uh, it's on my demo plan. I have it, it's listed there. We're gaining a little bit of uh, uh, square footage, but it is represented on the demo plan, how much it's encroached. Now this sight line was taken from, I think me and Chad worked this out. It's taken from the other side of the park and the sight line goes to the, my neighbors to the east or my client's neighbors to the east because we don't have, there's an empty lot, there's a park there. So we, we worked it out that way. So it's very close. We're putting a covered pa uh, porch on the back, which I sent a perspective, which you'll be able to see through the covered porch. So it might be helpful in the uh, in the application in the description. It it talked about the area that was encroaching. It's it's right on here. Okay, but it's what's important for us is if I'm sitting in the neighbor to the east backyard. Yes. How far up does that sidewall go more now than it did? <clears throat> 0 0.8 meters. 0 0.8 meters. Yeah. But it's is it is that part of the porch as well? It, it's the open porch. Yeah. Well, how much is obstructed? Like at how far? The porch is the porch is twenty feet. I mean, fourteen feet. Oh, from uh, the from the front of yes. the house. So. And how far is the front of the house? Uh, up? Do, do you have the site plan there? It just uh, uh, not not in a legible form. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Can you help us at all? Yeah. Is this it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I got to find my glasses. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, can 
Can you tell, Chad, can you point to the sidewall on the east side of the new construction? Mr. Chair, this is the, excuse me, this is the uh, proposed addition here. And this is the existing scenario. And you see it, this is the line. It's difficult to read, but that's the line that's being drawn from the, the nearest point of the Eastern dwelling to the nearest point of the Western dwelling. And that's the same line <clears throat> under this scenario. So you can see that the point eight that the applicants uh, applicant was referring to is in reference to the main dwelling here. It's a little bit beyond that, but the, this is the uh, covered open sided porch that's proposed uh, replacing uh, this, this, uh, the deck that was on previously. There's, there's an existing, there's an existing um, covered porch on the existing right. dwelling that's now. Cool. So, right. It, and, okay, and, so uh, and I'm almost trying to differentiate between a porch, covered porch that you can look through. Yeah. And where the wall of the house is. Yes. And how far has that come forward? Yeah, 0. 0.8, 0. 0.8 meters that the existing, if I was take the... So two feet. Yeah, if I was take the, the east, the northeast corner of the existing house and move it 0. 0.8 meters closer to the water, that's where it's at. Okay. Uh, I, I gave the perspectives too. Yeah, I don't know if you got those. No, it shows the open porch area. Yeah, I, I, I understand. I'm just trying to compare it with what's there, yeah. and and the way it was laid out. It seemed like it was a heck of a different. It's not that encroachment, bad. but it's not that much. It's two feet. If you look, Lord. if you look in the box. Underneath the, the demo plan, it tells you how many extra square foot I'm gaining. You're gaining on this. Yeah, but okay. square footage doesn't block your view. It's uh, linear okay. footage. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, so as indicated by the agent, there are some notes on the site plan that indicate the existing encroachment into the rear, rear yard and the requested encroachment into the rear yard. So doing a difference and just a quick calculation, it shows that the difference in what's already encroaching versus what more will be encroached, it's going to be approximately 200 square feet mm -hmm. difference. Uh, so with that said, as uh, our, our chairperson has indicated, the covered porch nature of the, of the encroachment, I guess let's uh, put it that way, I see in the staff report, there is a recommended condition to ensure that the covered porch remains open and not being an enclosed feature. Is that something that your client is aware of and supports? Yes, I, I'm the client. We're the client, Lisa and I. It yeah. will not be a three season room or a four season room. No way. As, as yeah. right. No way. Okay, anybody else? No, nothing, nothing. Oh, one more. Go yeah, ahead. one more. Thanks. Thanks so much, Mr. Chair. Uh, so the minor variances that we're looking at uh, to Mr. Jeffrey, we're looking at two proposed minor variances, one being what we just chatted about the encroachment into the rear yard, but the side yard minor variance, are we looking at one minor variance for one of the side yards? The way I read the application, it looked as if we were looking at two minor variances for the side yards and then one minor variance for the rear yard. Yes, sir, Mr. Chair, that's correct. Both side yards require relief in this case. Um, and so the, uh, the easterly side yard width is 1.5 meters. That's what's being proposed. And the westerly side yard width is 1.6 meters, where as 1.8 meters is the um, minimum requirement when a two-story uh, two dwelling is involved. Yeah. On the west side, I just try to get a little bit more room because that's where you'd be walking to the back. <clears throat> it's a 40 foot, basically a 40 foot lot. And under the zoning, it was 15%, side yards was 15% of that 40 feet, which came out to be around six feet. And that's, can't really do much with the, uh, the house. Well, 
Lori mentioned conditions. There are two recommended. Are you aware of both of those? That an engineered lot grading plan be approved by chief building official? Oh yeah, yeah that's a problem. And that the covered porch remain open sighted and no screens. Okay. Those will be attached to the motion when we get it. When we get it. When we get it. Tony. There we go. Okay, I'll make a motion that we accept the minor variance application, AO 124, uh, as long as the conditions are um, listed on the variance application that it remains open sided and the other condition of lock grading. The lock grading plan being submitted. Supported by Doug. On the motion, all in favor? Opposed? Gary, you know that unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having patience with us. Inquisitive people. Next is Where are we next? Desra? Desra Drive? No, 5140. Oh. Your street? Welcome. Welcome. Application for minor variance AO224. 905293 Ontario Limited, 5140 Year Street. The purpose of the application is to seek relief from the following subsections of Zoning Bylaw 85-18. Subsection 14.1.5 establishes maximum lot coverage as 40% and subsection 14.1.6 establishes minimum landscape open space as 10%. The applicant is proposing to construct a 109.3 square meter, 1176 square foot warehouse addition, resulting in 48% lot coverage and 7% landscaped open space. Minor variance A26 18 was granted on December 17, 2018, for 47% lot coverage. The property is designated business park in the official plan and zoned industrial M1 in zoning bylaw 85 18. Administration and agency comments Public Works and Engineering has no comments regarding the requested minor variance. Second comment, it is the expectation of Public Works and Engineering Services that the building addition proposal will be reviewed, approved through the building permit approval process. Public Works and Engineering Services will work with the owner and its consultants regarding any potential site servicing and storm management as part of the building permit process in relation to the construction of the addition at this address. Revised plans that capture the proposed site amendments must be submitted to Public Works and Environmental Services for review and approval as part of the building permit process. The Building Department. Confirmation on the new location of the Siamis connection as part of this addition will be required as part of the building permit approval process. Ontario building code requirements will need to be met at the time of permit application. Finance, there are no outstanding charges or balances, no comments from the fire department, no objection from IRCA, and they can confirm that um, a permit is not required by their office. Thanks, Donna. You have anything you'd like to add to all of that? Okay. Um, committee. Committee. Questions from the committee? Lori, go ahead. I don't even need to look. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, so just to confirm for the public record, we're looking at a variance of an already approved variance 
uh, it looks like only 1% difference from what we approved in the past. Uh, can, I guess, can you explain to us the, I know there's been four, four or five years, diff actually it was 2018, I believe. So several years difference. Um, these plans are, are new. I assume that you wouldn't have known about this addition in 2018 to ask for the full variance, but maybe you can walk us through that process. Thank you. Correct. In 2018, we put an addition on the back part of the building. We just find we need a little bit more room. And the way the building is, it's kind of like it, it locks off. So with this addition, we would just kind of square off the building and it would give us another thousand square foot of like warehouse space to put whatever we need to store just because we're running short on storage in the back. Hmm. There you go. You're done. Anybody else? Keep looking. No, no. Is there any, there's nobody in the crowd that wants to speak to this one way or the other? Okay. Committee. Motion. Doug? Who are you, Mr. Chair? I would like to bring forward uh, AO224 for approval for the minor variance. Also, while working with the uh, building department and the other department, make sure that the drainage and uh, required building permits are and construction is done correctly. Okay. I think those were part of the uh, the notes that were given us so that the proponent would know that that would have to be done, but I don't think they need to be okay. a, a condition per se, right? You have, but you, you know, because it was read to you that those things have to be done. Okay, seconder. Chris. Any further comment? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed, carried. Unim unanimous again. We're an agreeable bunch here tonight. Thank you. And Desiree Drive. And there's nobody here. Can we find out if we expected there to be nobody here? For Desiree Drive? Do we hear the application? I don't know. That's I'm gonna that's my next question. <laughs> Adana, you have got no information about I their attendance? They were forwarded Mike email. Mark McCluskey was listed on the agenda. An email was forwarded to the applicant and the agent on on Friday um with the uh IRCA uh letter and as well as the link. Uh, to the agenda containing the planning report. Um, no comments had been received or I haven't heard from the applicant or his agent. Uh, Chad, can you refresh us as to what we do when nobody's here on an application? Yeah, certainly. There's in the notice there is a clause under failure to attend hearing that specifies that uh, if you do not attend the hearing, uh, the committee may proceed in in your absence, including possible amendments to the original request, uh, and as except otherwise provided in the plan act, you will not be entitled to any further notice in the proceedings. Um, so the the committee at its discretion can can hear the application. Um, you know if if the uh, chair wishes I, I can attempt to to call the the agent uh, of record on the application to see if he could quickly jump on um, zoom um, it we are in support of the of the variance as you note in, in our plan report um and uh, you know, we believe it to be minor but um <clears throat> i'll just leave that up to you mr chair in other words can we give him a quick call and see if he's um, stopped by the police someplace or something? Please. 
So we're going to pause for a moment. If that's all right with the committee. It's up to Dave. If he doesn't stop the recording, he'll have to edit it. So he can do what he likes. Okay. Um, so Mr. Jeffrey has returned, having been able to get in contact with the owners of the property in question. Um, they seem to be comfortable that if the committee has any questions that uh, are outstanding, that Mr. Um, McCluskey is available by phone in case we need him. Um, but, but they seem to be okay with us going ahead with this. So I'm gonna ask the committee uh, by a show of hands, do you want to go ahead with this application with, in the absence of a, of a physical presence here? Show of hands, yes, yes, yes. Yes, okay, so we're gonna proceed with the application. So Donna, could you read it please? Application for minor variance AO324 401 Real Estate Trust Inc. 13320 Desro Drive. The purpose of the application is to obtain relief from subsection 8.1.6, which establishes minimum landscape open space as 20%. The applicant is proposing 17.1% landscaped open space to accommodate a car dealership development. The property is designated business park in the official plan and zone general commercial C1-4 in zoning bylaw 85-18. Administration and agency comments are as follows. Public Works and Engineering has no comments regarding the requested minor variance. Public Works and Engineering Services is concerned that shedding water directly off the new paved parking area will negatively impact the Sear drain, which is the municipal drain located directly to the north of the lot. The sheet flow runoff from the asphalt may cause accelerated drain bank erosion and concentrated channelized erosion where the banks are not protected. To avoid this, catch basins should be provided in the parking area to collect runoff and then directed to an existing manhole where it can be discharged into the sear drain at the site's existing outlet location. This arrangement will require the parking area to be dished, which will provide some added storage to compensate for the added runoff generated from the asphalt surface. The applicant will need to ensure that this storage area be sufficient to ensure that the water levels do not build high enough to impact the adjacent building elevations. Revised plans and capture the proposed site amendments must be submitted to Public Works and Environmental Services for review and approval. Should additional work be required within the existing municipal drain at the location of the lot's outlet, the applicant will be required to contact the drainage superintendent in advance of work commencing. Building department had no comments or Finance Department, there are no outstanding charges or balances. Fire Department had no comments. IRCA's comments are as follows. The above noted lands are subject to our development, interference in wetlands and alteration to shorelines and watercourse regulations under the Conservation Authority Act. The parcel falls within a regulated area of the Sear drain. The property owner will be required to obtain a permit from IRCA prior to any construction or site alteration or other activities affected by Section 8, 28 of the Conservation Authorities Act. Upon review of additional details provided for the application, IRCA will be in a position to advise on more accurate response regarding the appropriate level of their involvement with respect to water resource management on this application. Until for further information is provided to IRC on the proposed stormwater management solution for the site, the site plan conditions noted above are to be included in the site plan development agreement. County of Essex, the minimum setback for any new proposed structures on the property must be 46 meters from the limit of County Road 22, 
Permits are necessary for any changes to existing structures or the construction of new structures. Once the application passes committee of adjustment stage, further review and permits will be required once SPA is circulated. The county is requesting a copy of the decision on this application. Thank you. Okay, so there will be no public comments, obviously. Um, I have a couple of questions, but I'll let the committee go first. Anybody? Tony, I see your hand up. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, my only question would be for administration. And that is if the pro if the project is under site plan control or the property is under site plan control. Hey, Mr. Chair, um, the, the property is under site plan control, but this isn't subject to site plan control because of the nature of what's happening here. There are no building additions uh, or construction. It's simply if you look at the sketch on the screen, um, this area here where there, there's going to be vehicle display and additional parking. It's just increasing the pavement on the site. So removing the existing grassed area and paving that area. And Mr. Chair, I might, I might add that that is why the Public Works is asking for the plan to be submitted and approved to them prior to the variance coming in, into effect if the committee grants it. Were you able to see that okay, Tony? Uh, yes. Okay. Any that follow up? No. Anybody who's here in the flush have a question? Lori? Thank you, Mr. Chair. So a question to, uh, to administration, to Mr. Jeffrey. If the drainage plan is not acceptable to the town or is not accepted in any way, what would happen to the approval of the minor variance? Mr. Chair, the the minor variance would not come into effect. It would just simply not come into effect. That it's conditional on that happening. So, question? Questions? No more. My question uh, in the recommended conditions, you talk about a drainage plan that addresses the proposed site amendments must be must be submitted. Um. I would suggest a modification to that, that that says an engineered drainage plan, because these ditches in the parking lot are are uh, strange animals, and we want to make sure that it meets the issue that we're dealing with, which is overflow water into the sewer drain and a, and a storage area to prevent that, or or delay it, if you will. So I'm suggesting that that the, the plan for drainage be, if not if not developed by an engineer, at least reviewed. Thank you once again, Mr. Chair. So comments from our partner agencies, um, notwithstanding the comments from our internal um, colleagues, but rather from IRCA and from the county. So IRCA has requested that um, the property owner obtain a permit. So I suspect that we should also include that as a condition of approval. And then secondly, the question or the rather the comments from the County of Essex pertaining to construction of structures. So from what Mr. Jeffries indicated, if structures are not a part of this proposal, then permits would not be necessary, but like just to confirm with Mr. Jeffrey. Yeah, Mr. Chair, that's, that's correct. And uh, yeah, I think it's helpful to include that additional condition just to make sure that the clients are, or the applicant is aware that they must uh, approach ERCA for a permit. 
So are you agreeing with the idea of an engineered solution? Yes, Mr. Chair. And and just to note, uh, Mr. McCloskey, who is to have attended tonight, is the engineer uh, on this file. So, and he's already done some work on it. Yeah. But has he paid his dues? Oh. <laughs> Okay. Motion from the committee. I think we're done. Motion from the committee. Nobody want to attempt it? Go ahead. <laughs> attempt away. Uh, I'd like to bring for approval A0324-13320 Desert Drive. Upon ERCA permits being applied for and approved, uh, dra drainage engineer plan to be reviewed er, and approved. Uh, submit plans to public works for approval, which would include, uh, and I don't know, this has to be included in a dish parking lot, catch basin runoff, and if there's anything else that, that somebody could add to it. To, to satisfy the issues the chair. raised. In the discussion. That's, that's correct. Okay. Support by Tony. No further discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Unanimous again. Thank you very much. So much for being quick, eh? <laughs> So there are no deferrals. There's no unfinished business. There is new business. Oh, yeah. Our membership in the uh, OACA. I think you were copied on the emails between uh, Donna and I. And so everybody has heard her answer. Um, could... Could you circulate the date of the conference? Because I may be tied up for that, in which case I'm not sure that there's value in me applying for membership. So going that way. I believe the conference is in Windsor this year, the OCA conference. Even so, my, I'll tell you that I have a family member who's probably going for knee surgery and it, it runs right around that time. So uh, I'll have to take under, under advisement whether the membership is of any value to me if I can't go to the conference. Okay. Adjournment. Tony, thank you. You saw me looking at you. <laughs> Supported by. <laughs> thank you, Chris. All in favor. Okay. Have a good supper, guys. <laughs>